Hey everyone, today I'm sharing with you my current watercolor palette. I've had several requests of people wanting to know which colors I have. So we'll soon switch to the regular overhead um, view. I just wanted to give you a close-up so you'll know what to expect, see how my palette looks, and you can decide if this is interesting <laughs> for you. So my palette is custom made. It's a mixture of different brands and it changes constantly. I bring new paints in, I take others out depending on what I'm using and what I want to try and add to my palette. So um, it's a, a work in progress and it changes and evolves all the time. The first color on my palette, which I already swatched, sorry about that, is the Schmincke Naples Yellow Reddish. It's a mixture of four pigments, including two whites. It's very opaque and I really like it for skin tones. It's a convenience color, which I enjoy having in my palette. Next one is the Schmincke Naples Yellow. Sorry, I'm a little bit trying to catch up with the video, but I love the Schmincke Naples Yellow. It's my favorite from all the ones that I've tried. It's a mixture of three pigments. It's opaque, buttery, beautiful. I love to mix it with different pinks and purples. I think it makes for really interesting mixtures. And yeah, I really enjoy having it in my palette. Next one is the Sennelier Lemon Yellow. It's a classic lemon yellow. The Sennelier one is beautiful, very transparent, standard color. I use it a lot to mix greens. I add it to florals. It's not my favorite yellow, but it is a useful one to have in your palette. Next is Schmincke Pure Yellow. It's a transparent, I would say very neutral yellow. It's not too green, it's not too warm, very basic. Um, I use it often. It's a nice color to have. Next is the Core Indian Yellow. It's a mixture of three pigments and you can see it's very, very orangey. That's mostly my favorite yellow. Before that, I had in that pan New Gamboge from Daniel Smith, another very orangey yellow, which I absolutely love. Next up, we have the Schmincke Vermilion Light. It's one of their new colors that they came out last year, I think it was. It is transparent and it's just a very beautiful transparent version of vermilion if you like that color, which I really, really do. So I added it to my palette. Next is a color that only recently I added. I've had it in my stash, but didn't use it a lot. And that's the Daniel Smith Pyrrol Red. Um, it's a very, very intense red. It's semi-opaque. You can see it's it's very intense. Um, yeah, it's an interesting color. I'm still playing around with it. Next is Daniel Smith Quinacridone Coral. I love this color. It's exactly what it's supposed to be. A very beautiful, transparent, like all the Quinacridone colors. And it's just a beautiful coral. On the screen, it looks, I guess, a little bit more reddish than it actually is. Um, it's a little bit more pinkish, I would say, in real life, but it's just a gorgeous coral. I, I love it. I use it also for faces, for, um, you know, blush and lips and just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful color. Next up, we have Daniel Smith Rose Matter Permanent. Before I added this color to my palette, sorry for all the screaming in the background, if you hear it. My kids decided to be the loudest ever, because I'm recording, of course. Okay, hopefully it'll be a bit quieter now. <laughs> Sorry about that, but you know, that's life. It's summer vacation here, almost ending, so that's how it is. This is, as I've said, Rose Matter Permanent. It's two pigments, and before that, I had in that pan the Schmincke Ruby Red, which is a single pigment, very similar pink, gorgeous color. So either one gives you the same kind of, I, I don't know, like a very pretty, warm pink. I really love it. Next up, we have the Schmincke Brilliant Purple. This is a fluorescent color. It doesn't have a light fast rating. It is beautiful. It's, as you can see, kind of a fluorescent, brilliant, purplish pink. I love it. Next up, we have a recent addition to my palette. Again, I've had that pan for a long time, but uh, I decided to put it in my palette and see how I like it. And I, I do love the color. It's, it's beautiful. Um, you can see it's not as bright as I tend to go, 
but um, yeah, it's a gorgeous color. And it's, of course, maybe you already guessed, Daniel Smith Rose of Ultramarine. This is a beautiful granulating color. I'll insert now a close-up so you can see. You can very easily make your own mixture. It's basically ultramarine and quinacridone rose, so it's a convenience color. It's just a very beautiful uh, shade, and they got it right, Daniel Smith. Next one is Schminke Brilliant Red Violet. This is a pretty unique color. Um, not a lot of brands make such a color. It's again, fluorescent color, it's made from PV55. It doesn't have a light fast rating, so it's probably a uh, fugitive, uh, but I love it. It's gorgeous, and I use it a lot in mixture with this color, which I'm very proud of myself for finding. So this is the Windsor & Newton Cobalt Violet. It's the only Windsor & Newton pa paint I have in my palette. And the Cobalt Violet are a tricky bunch. The Daniel Smith color is gorgeous straight from the tube, but not so good uh, once dry. At least for me, it didn't work. So I was looking for something similar, and I found this one from Windsor & Newton, which is just beautiful, beautiful color. It has a strong granulation and is very, very interesting in mixtures with other colors. Next up, we have Daniel Smith Wisteria and Lavender. They're new uh, shades from 2017, and these are kind of more opaque. They're very beautiful, but I don't know, for some reason, I just don't find myself using them as much. But for now, they are in the palette. Next color is a bit of a mystery because I've had it for a very long time and the number already rubbed off. So I'm going to guess that this is the Schminke Ultramarine Violet. It's a very granulating color, very bluish purple, and it definitely I think it's that color because I see that um, ultramarine granulation in it. Next up we have Schminke French Ultramarine. It's one of the newer Schminke colors. It's a classic, beautiful French Ultramarine. It has beautiful, beautiful granulation, and I am soon running out of it. But I'll definitely be refilling it with um, some version of Ultramarine. So next color, and you can see those side by side, is Daniel Smith Cobalt Blue, and it's just a beautiful blue. Reminds me of, you know, blue skies on a really sunny day. So I like having it in, in my palette. I recently added it, and I'm really enjoying it. The next color, don't shoot me if I mispronounce it. It's from Old Holland, and it's the Scheveningen <laughs> Blue Light. And basically, it's a mixture of phthalo blue and white, which is, I think, the only way that phthalo blue is going to make it into my palettes. I'm just not a huge fan of that super strong staining, um, kind of greenish blue. So I don't see it. I just don't see myself using it, but, you know, you'll never know. Uh, but this version is very nice. I recently added it to my palette. I've had the half pan for a long time, and I'm enjoying it. It's a, a bit too opaque for me sometimes, so I need to use it lightly, but it's it's a pretty color. What can I say? Next up, we have the Schminke Helio Turquoise. If you want a super vibrant, uh, kind of more of a bluish turquoise, with which is made from a single pigment, then go for Schminke Helio Turquoise. You won't regret it. Next up is a must-have in any palette of mine, forever and ever. And this particular one, uh, this is the PG50 uh, version of Schminke, so they call it Cobalt Turquoise. I think Daniel Smith co call it Cobalt Teal. Every brand that I've tried, um, this particular pigment is just gorgeous with very slight variations. Some are just a tad greener, some are a tad bluer. They all granulate, they're all opaque, they're all gorgeous. It's just a must-have for me. It's like that perfect teal color in my palette. Next up is a very happy discovery for me. It's the Schminke Cobalt Green Turquoise. Um, beautiful granulating opaque color. I use it with a light hand 
And it's a dupe, I would say, for the Schmincke Sleeping Beauty Turquoise, which costs a lot more and you can't buy it in a pan. So if you like that color but you don't want to spend the money uh, and you don't mind if your paints are vegan or not, because Daniel Smith is vegan and Schmincke is not, then the Cobalt Green Turquoise from Schmincke is gorgeous. Next color is from Etsy. It's handmade. Um, I found it in a store called Designs by Rachel Beth, and it's just a pretty, I don't know, a bit a muted teal, I would say. Now the color I'm painting is another happy discovery. This is from Sennelier, and it's emerald green. It's the perfect mint, and even though it looks very opaque in the pan, very pastel, it's transparent. It's a gorgeous color. I love it so much. I'm, I have it in my palette all the time, and I use it all the time. Next one I'm going to say is the Schmincke Olive Green Yellowish. I'm not sure because I've had mine for a long time and I think they changed the numbers. But you can see it's kind of the gold green. I think it's usually called gold green. This earthy gold green color. It's a little, I think it's a bit hard to mix if you have such a bright color palette like mine. I think you will need three colors to get it. So I like having it in my palette. Those are my kind of greens. I really don't like any type of forest greens. And then the next one is a convenience color. Uh, mine is the Sennelier Brilliant Yellow Green. And as you can see, it's exactly that. You can easily mix it, but I like having it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.